Last time on How to Play D&D. You are Erdon Seroshend, a young wood elf soldier who has been tasked with scouting the position of a fierce orc vagabond known as Elosk the Man-Eater. To see if I see any footprints. They're going in many directions. A man. He's wearing leather, and he is holding a fishing pole. You there! What was that? Who goes there? Any signs of, uh, well, an orc? An orc? Well, mm, no. You had better be truthful with me. I'm gonna be on my way, and you stay out of my way. You hear a sharp twang, and you need to make a dexterity saving throw. A net has fallen on me. I think now I'm gonna actually try to climb this tree. So what do I see from up here? I'm looking for anything out of the ordinary. A cave opening, and you see light flickering from within the cave. Alright, welcome back to How to Play D&D, everybody. We will be continuing our adventure where we left off last time, and along the way we'll be learning some new rules and how to do some more things in D&D. Let's get right back to it. Hmm, I think that I'm going to try to sneak up into these bushes here and see if I can see or hear anything better from there. Make a stealth check. All right, so another skill check here. This time stealth plus two. So I'm gonna sneak up, try to at least. All right, I get an 18 plus two is gonna give me a 20. And it's up to the DM to decide what the check needs to be depending on you know how close people other people are. Um, how sober other people are, things like that, how much other background noise there is. So in this case, a 20 is definitely going to be enough for me to get in this bush, and I'm hiding in this bush, uh, just kind of crouched in the brush there. So I ask the DM, uh, what, what can I see from right here? <clears throat> you see the inside of the cave scattered with rocks, the light reflecting off the inside of the cave wall, but nothing else can be seen at this point. Hmm, I think I'm going to try to sneak over here and see if I can see anything from here. Make another stealth check. Alright, so I'm going to make my stealth check. Hopefully I can remain stealthy. 10 plus 2, and I, I had actually decided that this was going to have to be a, a 12, whereas it, it took a 10 to get here. The DM decided in this case it was going to be a 12 to get here because you're a little bit closer. So I'm able to sneak successfully over to here. Okay, so what do I see from here now? You see a large figure crouched in front of a fire wearing rough hide armor, a slight greenish hue to his skin. Hmm, okay. Well, I think this is the guy. Um, I think I'm going to try to kind of stealthily back up here. And, yep, I'm going to attack. I'm going to try to make a uh, an attack with my my bow and arrow. So I have, I'm going to draw my short bow once again and I'm going to try to back up in a stealthy fashion. Make a stealth check. Alright, now since I'm backing up I'm not really getting any closer. This is going to require a DC 12 I've decided. So I'm going to say uh, stealth check DC 12. Here we go. Oh, I easily make it. So I'm going to back up here. or I'm going to back up to the riverbank. I'm going to crouch behind the river. So, in this case, I have a short bow, and the short bow has a range of 120 feet, I think it is, so I'm easily going to be able to make that shot if I hit. You want to look at the range of your ranged weapons, but uh, my short bow has a range of 120 feet, which uh, this is going to give me the ability to hit. I'm going to roll to attack now. All right, so we've got a lot of information coming your way here, but this will help make combat go more smoothly. The first thing you need to determine in combat is, is anyone surprised? In the case we're about to see, you'll notice that the orc is surprised. I am aware of his presence, I'm about to attack him, and he is not yet aware of my presence. The second thing we need to do here is roll initiative. Now, initiative is a roll on a d20 that you add your initiative bonus to, which is usually based on your dexterity modifier, and whoever gets the highest roll gets to go first in the order of combat. 
So all the monsters and players roll, and the DM places them in the correct order. So we have determined step one that the orc is going to be surprised. Now of course for step two, we are going to roll for initiative. My initiative modifier is plus two. The orc's initiative modifier is also plus two. So we're gonna see who gets to go first once combat starts. All right, so I get a 14 plus two is 16. The orc gets a one and plus two is three. So I get to go first, but first we do the surprise round. And because the orc is surprised, he doesn't get to take a turn in this round. But let's head back to the book a second so we can actually see what our options are for actions in combat. Combat in D&D generally consists of two things. You have your movement and you have your action. Now there are some rare cases where you can also get a bonus action for certain things, uh, but don't plan on that for every turn thinking that, oh, I need to take a bonus action too. Generally you have movement and action. Your action is generally going to be your attack, and actually there are a whole lot of other things you can do in combat too. On page 192 of the player's handbook, you can read all about the possible actions in combat. So they are attack, cast a spell, dash, disengage, dodge, help, hide, ready, search, use an object. Uh, so there's just a whole lot of things that you could do in combat in addition to making an attack. All right, quite a bit of information there, but let's get back to the game and see exactly what I'm going to do in this surprise round of combat. Okay, so we are now in combat. Surprise round. I draw my bow, and I take a shot at the orc. My short bow, I have plus four to attack. So four plus four is eight to hit. Now I have the orc's stats written out here. This is Elosk the Man-Eater. And he has an armor class of 13. So I've just rolled an 8 to hit. I am not going to be able to hit with that because I only got an 8 and I would have to get a 13 in order to hit this guy. So the DM says, Your arrow clangs against the rock here and, def and is deflected in that direction. Well, shoot. So now he's probably going to be aware of me. And let's see. It is still my turn since I'm first in the initiative order. Now we officially, the surprise round is over. He's aware of me. Now we begin real combat. So I'm gonna roll to attack again with my short bow. All right, now that time I got a 19. And for me, actually, I'm a fighter and I took the champion ability. I forgot to write this down. But a 19 is gonna be a critical hit. Usually a 20 is a critical hit because I'm a champion, It's gonna, a 19 or a 20 is a critical hit. So this is a good opportunity to talk about what is a critical hit. First off, when you roll a 20, it's always gonna be a success no matter what it is. In this case, it's a critical hit, so I'm definitely going to hit no matter what the armor class is. Usually when you do a critical hit, you double your damage dice. So my short bow is 1d6 plus two. I don't get to damage all of that, but how it works is I get to double my die roll. So 1d6 I have here. I got a 4. If I double that, it's 8. And then I add my modifier of plus 2. So that's going to be a total of 10 damage against this orc. As the DM, I keep track of the statistics here. And he now has uh, 5 hit points left. So that was pretty good. My first attack, I rolled a critical hit. All right, now he is aware of me. It's his turn now. And as the DM, I say, the orc moves toward you fiercely, brandishing a javelin. He's gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six. So he is now within range of his javelin and he, he cries out, who are you? And he throws the javelin in my direction. In order to hit me, he needs to match my armor class, which is 15, or 17 if I have my shield. I have my bow out, so it's reasonable to assume I do not have my shield right now. It's probably stowed on my pack. So, here we go. He's going to roll to attack. With his javelin, he has a plus 5 bonus. 
9 plus 5, or that's a 6 actually, the dot is on the bottom. So 6 plus 5 is 11. That is not going to be enough to hit my armor class. So the DM says, the javelin whizzes past your head and into the water. Alright, at this point I think I am going to drop my bow on the bank here and I'm going to draw my sword as I charge toward him. All right, now I'm going to be using my long sword. Uh, so my long sword also has a plus four attack bonus. So I'm going to roll to hit first. All right, I got a 15. And then my damage, if I'm holding this thing two-handed, I don't have my shield on, it's going to be 1d10 plus two. If I do have my shield, it's 1d8 plus two. And some weapons have the versatile property that can be used one, uh, one or two-handed, two-handed with a slight damage advantage. So in this case, 1d10. This is my d10, and I'm going to add two. In this case, I got the zero actually on these ones is a 10, so I got a 10 plus two. And so that is going to do this guy in. Wow, he didn't last as long as I thought he would. So, he's gone. When a monster reaches zero hit points, they're dead. So the DM might say, if I'm DMing, I usually say, describe how you kill this orc. All right, so I charge him with my sword and plunge my sword into his belly, moving it up, and he falls to the ground, spitting blood in my face. All right, so a nice grisly ending for our orc here. Now, just so you know, if I get to zero hit points, I don't automatically die. You can look up how, to, how death saves work, but I'll just make a note of that. If I were to get to zero hit points, I would not automatically die. You get a chance to, uh, to make some saves to, to live. But I would be knocked down, and I would be unconscious at zero hit points or, or less. The only way I do die is if I get to negative 28 hit points, or I fail to make my saves. But that's for another time. All right, so Erdon Saroshen was victorious in his fight against this orc. Uh, he would probably, I don't know, take off his head and take it back to the village as proof or something like that. He would probably go in and explore the cave here. Perhaps he would find, um, you know, human bones or elf bones, the, the victims of his uh, plunder. After all, he is Elosk the man-eater. Perhaps he would loot the cave and find some gold or some weapons that he could use or perhaps on the corpse. But that's just some of the basics of how you play D&D. So in this little episode here, uh, we have learned how to make saving throws, uh, how to use our skills and make skill checks. We've learned about armor class and weapon damage. So I hope this has all been helpful for you. Feel free to leave any comments down below. And I hope to do more of these videos as well teach more of the basics of Dungeons and Dragons and how to play the game. It's a great game. I want to thank my assistant five-year-old Caleb here for joining me and helping me roll some dice and hand me things. And uh, yeah, everybody take care. Until next time, happy gaming.